Bonjour and welcome back to another episode of Cooking with McKern. I'm your host, Ryan McKern. And today we're going to explore and show how easy it is to make a pizza, dough, and sauce home from scratch. And how it completely will change your mind about ever buying a frozen pizza ever again. What I chose today to do was a New York style thin crust a very simple red pizza, but it's also uh, inspired by the Neapolitan and just those those uh, very basic pizzas that just burst with flavor. Sometimes simple is better when it comes to pies, and this one is great. It's just you know it's cheese and basil, the sauce, olive oil, which is infused with some herbs, and uh, it's just fantastic. For whatever reason, I did not film myself making the pizza sauce. So uh, I will include that recipe, however, in the comments. Uh, I think I was, I'm doing this all by my phone, so holding it with one hand and then trying to ladle the sauce around. I just figured I was going to um, completely destroy the pizza and, and drop it or destroy the counter space, make a mess in the kitchen. So trying to avoid that. So for this pizza dough recipe, we're going to have uh, our ingredients here. Three-fourths cup of warm water at 100 degrees. Should be warm to the touch, not hot nor cold. Two cups of flour, one tablespoon of sugar, one tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon of Italian herb seasoning. And then for our olive oil, three tablespoons of olive oil. We're going to infuse that with two small sun-dried tomatoes, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of Italian herb seasoning, three-fourths of an onion chopped, one packet of yeast, and one tablespoon of black pepper and six to twelve fresh basil leaves. I have a garden right outside that I got uh, Italian oregano, rosemary, uh, basil, fresh mint, green onions. So I use a lot from the garden to uh, to make these recipes that I come up with. It just the freshness of the herbs just make it pop every time. So as we pictured here before, I have the ingredients laid out when I. That olive oil that you see, uh, we're going to first infuse that olive oil in that process. Let the oil infuse for at least 4 to 24 hours before you make your pizza. I've left mine overnight, and I think it makes all the difference. I also recommend you make your sauce 24 hours in advance to let the flavors sit and come fully heightened within the sauce. Next day sauce, to me, is kind of like, for a pizza sauce, is sort of like you know making a gumbo. Gumbo's amazing, fresh off the pot the next day. All these flavors do their magic, and it's just something else, to tell you what. All right, so next, when we actually get all that done, we're going to take a mixing bowl. We're going to fill that with warm water and let that sit five minutes prior to making your dough. When you're, if, when you're making your dough, if you use a cold bowl, it's going to zap all the moisture out of the dough. It's going to make it hard and clumpy, uh, which we don't. We want to avoid that. Once we've completed that, go ahead and dump out the hot water. And I usually use a, a measuring cup for this. This is one thing I did not film either, but this is really easy. Uh, we're going to activate our yeast. We're going to warm them up. So I usually use like a measuring cup and I put three-fourths a cup of warm water. Again, you can get, get this right out of the faucet. If you have a thermometer, it should be about 100 to 106 degrees. Warm to the touch, but not hot. The reason for this is cold water is going to kill the yeast and hot water is going to kill the yeast. So we want to get that lukewarm right in there. Pour that yeast packet in, and then we're going to take half that tablespoon of sugar, and we're going to point, put that into the, the yeast of the water, and give it a good stir. Let's set for 7 to 10 minutes, and basically what we're looking for when you come back, it should be kind of like frothy, kind of bubbly, then you'll be know you're ready to go. All right, so after that's done, you're going to next in a large bowl, coat the bottom of sides with a tablespoon of our olive oil infused creation that we made earlier or the day prior. Pour the flour into the bowl. Uh, you can make it a hollowed hole in the center if you like doing that by hand. I've seen it done that way. I whisk. Some people have a mixer. You can use that. And now we're going to add the remaining sugar, a teaspoon of salt, and we're going to add that into the flour. Give it a nice whisk. Then we're gonna add the yeast and the flour together and mix very well. It takes me about 10 minutes or so, give or take. You know, just gonna wanna look for fine ball clumped together. I mean, it should like poke it, it should kind of 
poke back, you know, rise back fairly well. And you just want to make sure it's a consistency that's just going to kind of all meld together there. Now we're going to knead the dough on a flour-covered cutting board, table, or pan. Knead and break apart with your hands for roughly five minutes, making sure no dry spots are on inside or out. You can add a little bit of water during this peri period if you notice the dough is too dry. Every kitchen has a different humidity, water pressure, and airflow, so you'll have to adjust according to your environment. After the dough is balls meated for about five minutes, take two tablespoons of your olive oil, coat the sides of the bottom and the bottom of the bowl, return the dough back to the bowl, and drizzle a little of your olive oil on top, and next add that Italian herb seasoning on top. We're going to cover this. I use tin foil with a, like a little bit of a hole, a little ventilation in it. Breathable saran wrap will work as well. Some people put like a, like a breathable cloth and then put a rubber band around it. And we're going to leave this out to rise. Some people put in like a 100 degree, 125 degree oven, let it get warm, and then shut it off and put, put your bowl in there to let the dough rise. I, I leave mine out. You want to make sure it's, you know, in a room... Warmer room temperature, not not cold. Don't put it in the fridge. My house is about 73 degrees, so I let that rest for two hours, two to four hours. You can even let that rest overnight. It'll be fine. You're going to poke the, bow, the dough to test once again. You should see that rise back up. And the dough will look small while this process is being done, but just keep in mind, your dough will expand in a few hours and it will get bigger. Next, we're gonna preheat your oven. I cook this about 425. You can do about 450 or higher, just use a less cook. I cooked for mine for about 12 minutes. If you're using about 450, I'd say six to eight minutes. Anything higher than that, knock down the time. Just keep, keep your eye on it. This, this can be different each time and you don't wanna overcook the crust you don't want to burn the bottom of your pizza all right so now we're going to take our dough back out kind of fist that down give it a few punches <laughs> lightly though don't have to uh, go crazy or nothing just to ensure the moisture settles and rises you can see this dough that i made here it's got a some of that olive oil still like around the sides i love that that added so much about the final product tasting amazing next we're going to flour up sprinkle that flour on your pizza pan or your cooking stone stretch dough out in a circular formation that you see people do in pizzerias. Next, we're gonna add black pepper and the, the remaining of our olive oil to the stretched dough all around. We're gonna po poke that with a fork all around as well. This is to ensure that we're not gonna have bubbles and the pizza doesn't rise up to like a giant cake. All right, so next we're gonna work on the crust. So just pinching together the edges of the crust. You can also grab it and kind of bend it over, flip it over. Do that all the way around make to the sizing of your your desire i i like you know not too too much crust i like thin crust so i don't, I don't go crazy with it all right and the next we're gonna watch a video here showing how to do your sauce because this guy does it way better than i do it <laughs> so watch this true italian chef do uh, a little tutorial for you on putting on your sauce so come si mette il pomodoro sulla pizza si prende un bel cucchiaio di pomodoro, si mette al centro, so grab a little spoon of tomato, put it exactly on the center of the pizza, you grab it like that, the, the spoon, right here, with these two fingers, and then you control with your little finger, small. So, prendete il cucchiaio in questa maniera e lo tenete bel in, pe in pendenza qui, poi Dopo che andiamo, andiamo a fare questo movimento, so we are going to move the spoon this way. So, easy and slowly. You don't want to press too much. Fate certi di non spingere troppo il pomodoro. Voilà, più o meno un centimetro, like one inch, and then one inch from the crust. All right, so after that, we're gonna add our mozzarella and about half of our basil onto the dough. I also used a uh, cheddar and Parmesan blend for this pizza. You can use whatever cheese you like. So once our oven's ready to go, I'm gonna put that uh, pizza on the bottom rack. Like I said, I used mine for 425 for about 12 minutes, keeping my eye on it uh, for a darker, cr uh, crunchier crust, cooking a higher temperature with less time. 
So once our pizza is ready to go, we can remain the, add the remaining basil on top. So it looks like that beautiful marguerite. And then I also do crushed red pepper flakes and some fennel to give it a little bit of a kick. I like spice. And you're good to go. I hope you all enjoy and I hope you have fun making this. It's extremely easy to do. Uh, next time I'm going to try to pull some other pizzas like Detroit style, Connecticut, New Haven, and Chicago deep dish. That's it. Bon appetit, everybody. Au revoir.